Hello everybody, my name is Neve. I work in the archives in Donegal County Council and today I'm going to talk to you about life in County Donegal 100 years ago. In 1920 Ireland was very much in the war in the middle of the War of Independence but for most families life didn't change very much in that time. For the majority of people life continued as before and for those living in Donegal it was tough especially when we compare it to our own lives today. This is a map of Donegal from about 1925. In 1920, Donegal was very much a rural county with a farming community. The population was about 168,000. In 2011, it was 161,000. So the population declined in that 100 or so years. There had been improvements in people's lives since the famine in the 1840s. But these improvements were very gradual. Most people by 1920 were still not well off and some were very, very poor. In Ireland, about 100 years ago, houses were kind of divided into four different types or classes. This is a fourth class house. Fourth class house was usually a mud cabin with only one room, often with no chimney or windows. This is another one again here. And this is a third class house. A third class house was still either mud or stone built, but with two or even three rooms, and it was a sturdier type of house. Most families lived in third or fourth class houses. There was no electricity or running water. Water had to be brought from the well in buckets. The only heating was the open fire in the main or only room. Children and parents often huddled together near the heart to sleep. A second class house was either a good farmhouse in the country or in town a townhouse. This is a row of terraced houses in Moville, Foster's Terrace. You can see that these are good houses with two floors and good windows and uh, looking very warm and cosy. A first class house was the type of grand house or mansion only lived in by the richest people in the country, the landed gentry. This is Hornhead House, County Donegal. Photograph was taken in the early 1900s. And you can see two wee children there and they look very well dressed. So life on the land, farm life in Donegal 100 years ago. What was it like? Well, there were often larger farms in the east of the county, in, in the Lagan area. These farms tended to be very small in the west of the county. Life began to improve in the 1920s with more homes for poorer people and better water and drainage facilities. There was also town, light, town lighting. Electricity was coming in very gradually. Farm labourers, also called landless labourers because they owned no land at all, lived in very tiny cottages, often fourth class houses, mud or stone cabins on farmland owned by farmers. The rural district councils began to buy land from the well-off farmers and build simple cottages for the landless labourers. The new homes were very basic compared to our homes today. There was still no electricity or running water and no indoor toilets. But to many families who lived in terrible overcrowded conditions in mud cabins with leaky roofs, they were, they were almost luxurious. They were new, clean and warm and had separate rooms. They often came with an acre of land on which families could sow potatoes and vegetables. And rent was low. Life was improving. Farmland was mainly still owned by large landowning families, but it was gradually being transferred to tenant farmers. Seasonal migration by workers to the Lagan continued in the 1920s, as did migration to Scotland. Sometimes people went to Scotland to work in cities such as Glasgow, in bigger industries. Farming was both livestock, cattle and sheep, and tillage, oats, barley and potatoes. You probably remember reading about the blight or disease that destroyed the potato crop in the Great Famine in the 1840s. But blight can occur any year. In 1916, after bad storms of blight, there was a severe potato shortage. And you can see from this photo from Alan Head that mechanisation of farming had not come in in the early 1900s. No tractors, no combine harvesters yet. Fishing was also a common way of life and still is in Donegal, but it's never been an easy way to make a living. 
Since the war, World War I, there had been competition from the large steamboats from Scotland. Donegal fishermen tended to use the smaller green castle yawls. Herring was a very important fish for both eating locally and for export. If herring was plentiful, that was a good year for fishermen and for their families. So what was life like for children in County Donegal in 1920? Very different to today, I can tell you. It's hard to imagine, but children aged as young as 10 and 11 were sometimes hired out to the more fertile farms of the Lagan. Boys and girls were inspected at hiring fairs and would go and live at the farm for six months at a time. Work was difficult, the hours long, and there was no school. Children must have been very, very homesick. They must have really missed their families and their own way of life, being away from them for so long at a time. 30% of children in Ireland overall didn't attend school regularly at all. Teachers in Ireland and in Donegal despaired that children would ever receive a decent education. This is a photo of a fair day in Glenties. So what was life like in schools? Rural schools in Donegal usually had one room. Children often had to collect firewood to keep their building warm in winter. Children were often absent from school to help in the farm or in the home. Particularly during harvesting, they would be absent. Children often attended school in bare feet and poor clothing, and absences due to illness were also frequent. Inspectors came to the school and were not always complimentary about children or their teachers. They would write reports giving out that the schoolhouse was cold, there wasn't enough turf got for the fire, spelling standard was poor, or there were too many children absent. But there was no money from the British government, which ran the country at the time, to improve any of this. This is a wee school in Donegal, Newton Cunningham National School, about the year 1930. As you'll see, there's just one teacher and almost 50 children of all ages. It looks like they have dressed up for the occasion of the photograph, because photographs would have been very rare back then. And this is a typical school and a desk and a bench with an inkwell. Children sometimes use pens that you have to dip in ink to write with. The school is from near Fort Dunry. It's actually boarded up now, but it would have been a school that would have been occupied 100 years ago. Irish was not taught in, in Donegal schools until after independence in 1922, except in some schools as an extra subject. And there's a list of the type of subjects that children had in school, in primary school. English, history, arithmetic, geography, science, cookery and laundry, singing, drawing, needlework, even training of infants. But the cookery, laundry and needlework was only taught to girls. Do you think that was fair? Would that happen nowadays? I hope not. The timetable doesn't include religion, but sometimes the clergy would come in to teach religious subjects to individual schools, Protestant and Catholic. What was life like for women in 1920? Well, while men worked on the farm or fishing or labouring jobs or migrated, women usually worked from home, especially after they became mothers. Sometimes they had to work the farm and did many of the daily jobs, such as milking cows or mending fences. Some women worked in what were known as cottage industries, spinning, weaving, sewing or knitting. Others worked in the fishing industry, gutting or cutting up fish that was messy or fairly smelly work, as you can imagine. Some women worked in shops or as servants or in the big house. Pay was not good in any of these jobs. There's an expression, working to make ends meet, which means not earning very much. In 1920, Ireland was still recovering from the years of World War I, during which thousands of men had gone and fought, and many thousands had died. Many women had joined the army as nurses. One such woman was Catherine Black from Remelton. When people returned from the war, it was often hard to find work again. In 1920, women could not vote in the same way as men. Although female property owners could vote and stand for local elections, women could not vote or stand for in, for in general elections, the main elections. Women finally got the vote, the right to vote in general elections under the first Irish Free State Government in 1922. 
you had to be 21. So I'm going to talk a little bit about health and hospitals now and um, how, how things were back then. This is a design of a workhouse. Workhouses or poor houses were built for people who were destitute, which means extremely poor with no homes or food. There were eight workhouses in Donegal. You should find out what the nearest one was to your home. Some families had to spend time in workhouses if they had nowhere to live and no money to live on. A teacher would come to teach the children in the workhouse while they lived there. And children often worked in the kitchen or garden after school. Life was tough and the food was of poor quality and monotonous. Bread, potatoes, milk, etc. So workhouses were abolished in 1922 under the new Irish government. This is the old Letterkenny workhouse on the high road in Letterkenny. It is now the county museum. 1918 there had been a flu pandemic which lasted through to 1919 as well. A bit like our virus today. A lot of public places were closed, cinemas, theatres, schools, people's places of work. But public health was improving. Diseases such as measles, diphtheria, whooping cough, TB, they still existed in 1920. But there are vaccines now for most of these illnesses and we don't get them anymore, thankfully. People often had mental illness too. Doctors in 1920 20s did not know how to treat people with such illness. They tended to put them into mental hospitals, as they called them, where they often lived a, lot, a long time. In 1916, 134 people were admitted to St. Collins Hospital in Letterkenny. The youngest was only 13 years old, and the oldest was a 77 year old man. This is a photograph from the 1900s of St. Collins Hospital. Among the people admitted in 1916, 1920 were shop assistants, labourers, farmers, housekeepers, servants, shoemakers, policemen, solicitors, a flax, a flax gutcher, soldiers, a sailor and a lady of means. So they were from all walks of life and ages. But did people enjoy life in 1920? What did they do for entertainment? Well, entertainment was usually in the home back then with family, friends and neighbours, exchanging stories and songs, playing music, sharing news, attending fair days. Occasionally they were travelling in community shows and circuses and cinemas began to open across Ireland during the 1920s and 30s. This is a photo of children playing hula hoop. Children played games such as hopscotch, hide and seek, marbles, blind man's buff, Gaelic football, hurling, conkers, rounders, hula hoop. Games not unlike what children play today. But at night today, there were few toys except for the well-off. No radio, no TV, internet, computer games. Children didn't learn ballet or judo or guitar or go to swimming lessons. Life was simpler then. Do you think your life is a better one today? I hope you've enjoyed this short journey to the past and that we will have given us some idea of what life was like a century ago in Donegal. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.